Welcome to worship with First Congregational Church of Southington. We are an open and affirming congregation of the United Church of Christ. Wherever you are on life's journey, you are welcome here. Whether you are watching us from within Southington, Plantsville, or the local towns, you are welcome. Whether you are watching us from across the country, you are welcome. Wherever you are in the world watching this service, you are welcome here. And we're glad that you are here to celebrate and recognize Ash Wednesday with us. Lent is a preparation to receive God's most powerful gifts, a transforming grace that forgives us even from the cross, a resurrection that overcomes the power of death and the promise that God is always with us through the abiding spirit of Jesus Christ. To truly receive gifts such as these, there are things that we need to let go. We need to loosen our hold on the things of this world that can suffocate our soul. We need to release our sins that cloud our spirit's light with guilt and shame. We need to set free our anxieties that bind us to our fear of death and losses, both large and small. We need to let go of the ways we stave off loneliness, rejection, and abandonment so that we can find ourselves being held by a love that will never let us go. As you prepare yourself for this service, I invite you to allow God's spirit to bring your mind to the things you need to let go so that God's gifts may be present to you. And so I invite you, if you have a candle nearby, to, in, to light that candle, to recognize that God's light is still present on this dark day when we celebrate Ash Wednesday. Join us now as we celebrate Ash Wednesday.
As we prepare for our 40-day journey of Lent, we turn around from the distractions of the daily noise and focus our attention on listening in a deeper way. Writer Parker Palmer suggests we must listen to what our life is telling us. In other words, to listen to the deep wisdom God gave, us, gave to us as a birthright, connecting to God's purpose once again. And so I invite you to join me in these words. Come and rest. Come and listen. Lay the fullness of your lives before the maker. Come and rest. Come and listen. There's a wisdom deep within that calls us closer. You are invited now to take a moment of silent rest, sitting quiet, quietly in the silence without any expectation of what you ought to be thinking. Don't worry about any sounds from children or noise from around your house. Simply let it float into and out of your attention. 
And if you find it difficult to settle your thoughts, contemplate the following. Listen past the noise. Take the most adventurous trip of your life, the one inside yourself. I now invite you to join me in praying a unique type of prayer called the examine. The examine is a type of prayer introduced by St. Ignatius of Loyola over 400 years ago. And we will use this modified responsive examine as a prayer to guide us in our reflection during Lent. For that which then I thought was right. Have mercy God. For that which now I regret. Forgive me, God. For that which hence I know not what to do. Guide me, God. Come and rest. Come and listen. Know that grace, forgiveness, and guidance are available to you at each and every moment that we turn to receive them. Join me now in our, responsive, in our response to our forgiveness. Thanks be to God. Come and rest. Come and listen. Lay the fullness of your lives before the Maker. Amen. The Gospel reading for this Ash Wednesday is from the Gospel according to Mark, from the first chapter, verses 9 to 15. Listen for what the Spirit is saying to the church. In those days, Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And just as he was coming up out of the water, he saw the heavens torn apart and, a spirit, and the Spirit descending like a dove on him. And a voice came from heaven. You are my son, the beloved. With you I am well pleased. And the Spirit immediately drove him out into the wilderness. He was in the wilderness 40 days, tempted by Satan. And he was with the wild beast, and the angels waited on him. Now after John was arrested, Jesus came to Galilee, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, The time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come near. Repent and believe in the good news. Pray with me. On this day, O oh God, when we remember that we were created from dust and to dust we shall return, we pray that you would quiet our hearts and still our minds so that we might be quiet enough and be startled by the truth of your word as we begin our Lenten journey. Amen. I have become convinced over many years of ordained ministry that to listen to the voice of God to hear God's call and follow it drives us into places that we never expected we would end up. Lent begins today, and through these 40 days, we will invite you to listen. Listen for the small, still voice of God calling to you. So I begin our listening with a favorite story about hearing God's call. Will Campbell is a hero of mine, a renegade Southern Baptist preacher and civil rights activist who inspired me from the very beginning of my ministry in the church. He left Mississippi to earn his Master of Divinity degree at Yale Divinity School, but returned to the South to try to be a preacher. 
He tried and, by his own account, failed. But he became something much more. I share with you a much-loved story of his. It is from his memoir, Brother to a Dragonfly, and I wish you could hear him tell it as I once did at Duke Divinity School. Imagine the exaggerated drawl of a country and western singer. Think Johnny Cash and you'll get a sense of his style. This story is one he tells about another Southern Baptist preacher in Louisiana named Thad Gardner. That is enough introduction, you will get the point. So here we go. Thad Garner was, I suppose, the most profane man I have ever met. And I suppose, in a way, he was the most profound. Whatever he was, he made a deep impression on me at the time. Both of us were Southern Baptist preachers. Sometimes I would go hunting or fishing with him. I was not really a hunter but he taught me how to shoot and how to avoid copperheads and quicksand, and he would compare both those enemies with various aspects of the pastorate. On one occasion, we were about to conclude an all-day and totally unproductive bird hunt. The dogs had pointed at everything from rabbits to starlings, but not one quail had been flushed. Now three of them were frozen in a hard point position at what was sure to be the largest covey of quail in the parish. When the flush signal was given, that proved to be the case. Even when I'm expecting it, even when I have seen the movement of the little critters through the underbrush, I am always startled by the sudden fluttering of quail wings, lifting their fat bellies like giant bumblebees from the earth and away from their pursuer. Consequently, I seldom got off a shot before they were well out of range. This time, Tad got off three quick shots, each boom blending with and echoing the last. As his last shot was dying away, I jerked the trigger and waited for the jolt against my shoulder and the ringing in my ears. But nothing happened. The thing was not even loaded. Despite the three volleys in such rapid succession, nothing lay dead for the dogs to retrieve. They had missed, or Thad had missed as surely as I had with an empty gun. Though I had not led what one would call a sheltered existence during my life, and my own language did not always measure up to garden party standards, I was not familiar with some of Thad's words. For a full 60 seconds, the big Louisiana field was filled with his expletives. At the dogs, at the birds, at me, at the gun, at the manufacturer of the shells, at the Almighty. All were profaned and reviled of this misfortune. When he quieted down, he sank backward onto an eroded levee. I sat on the ground not far away. It was the occasion for a question that I had wanted to ask for some time. Thad? Why did you decide to be a Baptist preacher? He looked puzzled, and not just a little hurt. He pondered my question for a long time, sighting and squinting down the barrel of his shotgun. Finally, he looked me straight in the eye and answered my question. Because I was called, you fool adding an expletive that I dare not utter from this sacred desk. Well, Campbell goes on to describe Thad as a preacher with assuring certainty, and of all the preachers he ever met, the person he is most convinced had been called to do exactly what he was doing. And I imagine when God considers Thad, God is convinced too, although I cannot make that judgment for sure. It's another reminder that to listen to God's call is to be driven to places where you never expected you would end up. Ash Wednesday this year begins with the Gospel of Mark's good news, a terse account of Jesus' baptism and his being driven into the wilderness 
only 11 verses into the gospel, Jesus hears God call and answers it, and God is pleased. And after his baptism, he comes up out of the water, and he hears God's voice saying, You are my son, the beloved. With you, I am well pleased. But with his hair still wet from, with the waters of the Jordan, God's Spirit drives Jesus out into a place he never thought he would end up, into the wilderness, to be tempted by Satan for 40 days. Forty days of silence, perhaps of torment, in the company only of wild beasts, and at some point, a few angels. The other Gospels, Matthew and Luke, tell us that Jesus was led by the Spirit into the desert to be tempted. That's a much kinder way to look at it, to be led to temptation. We pray that every week, lead us not into temptation. The Greek word is ago, to lead. Somehow so that sounds nicer than being driven from the Greek word ekbali, which can mean bring forth, cast out, drive out, expel, leave, pluck out, put out, or send away. Most often that word is used in the Bible, Mark in particular, to describe a demon being cast out of someone. Matthew and Luke give us some detail about the conversation between Jesus and Satan in the desert. Mark is not concerned with that. The other Gospels describe three temptations, but Mark chooses not to dwell there. Forty days Jesus is in the wilderness. Forty days he is tempted by Satan. The wild beasts are his company. Finally angels come and minister to him. End of story. It is a dark, enigmatic story with which to begin a gospel. But that is where Mark drops us on this Ash Wednesday, driven into the wilderness. It is yet another reminder that to listen to God's call is to be driven to places that you never expected you would end up. But Mark doesn't need for us to know what happens in the wilderness. Mark wants us to listen to what happens on the other side of the wilderness. Jesus comes bursting out of the sandstorm, proclaiming the good news of God and saying, the time is fulfilled and the kingdom of God has come. Repent and believe in the good news. Mark lets us imagine what the wilderness was like for Jesus. And what I imagine Jesus discovered in the wilderness was his call. His call to be like you and me, human, subject to all that we are subject to, to be alone, tormented, tempted. In this story, everyone finds out what the being the Son of God really means. This is the story where Jesus shows us who he is going to be by going through exactly what you and I have been through and will go through. Who among us has not gone into the wilderness, felt the loneliness and torment of that desert? As much as it may surprise everyone, including him, Jesus coming out of the wilderness will be one of us. Accept the risk of being one of us. The great preacher Barbara Brown Taylor put it this way, this is chiefly a story about Jesus' identity, but insofar as we belong to him, it is a story about our identity too. There are plenty of times when we are tempted to believe that we deserve bigger and better than we have. That devilish voice in our head says things like, if you are a child of God, shouldn't things be going smoother for you? If you are really a Christian, I mean, shouldn't you be happier, healthier, richer, safer? Is that what Jesus 
was saying to, is that what Satan rather was saying to Jesus in the wilderness? Yet, in spite of whatever temptation he faced in that wilderness, Jesus, at the very beginning, is committed to experience the reality of life, the fact that life does not always bring happiness, health, wealth, and safety. It certainly didn't for him. Sometimes life is hard. People we love get sick. Relationships we cherish end. A pandemic keeps us from seeing the people and doing the things that we love. Sometimes our lives are driven into the wilderness. So, when we are driven there, what do we do? I think that is the question Mark is asking us. Well, we do what Jesus did, I think. We turn around. With Satan tempting him, telling him he couldn't do what God called him to do, I think Jesus turned around in the wilderness and listened. He must have listened and heard the small, still voice of God again. That voice he heard at his baptism, you are my child, beloved. With you, I am well pleased. If you are ever driven into the wilderness and you hear that still, small voice of God calling you, and then the next minute you hear some tempter's voice telling you that you are not strong enough or good enough or spiritual enough to do what God has called you to do, here's what I want you to do. Remember, that is not who you are. Remember, you are enough. You are made in God's image. And when you're ready, I want you to look that tempter straight in the face and say, I'd rather be alone with God in this wilderness than in the lap of luxury with you. Now, shoo. You might not be able to do that right away. The tempter's voice can be strong. But when you can manage that, when you can listen again for those small, still whispers in the wind, be still and know that God is there, I think there is a very good chance that you will hear another voice before long, a million times more beautiful than the first. You are my child, the voice will say. Beloved, in you, I am well pleased. Please join me in a spirit of prayer. Generous God, who fills the earth with abundance, oceans and skies full of water, fields that yield food, flowers and birdsong and beauty of all sorts, May we live with generous hearts, with open hands. Humble God, who became flesh and entered into our humanity, who touched the untouchable, spoke to the outcasts, washed the disciples' feet. May we live with humble hearts, looking always to the needs of others. Righteous God, who longs for us to be in relationship with you, through sincere prayer, fasting, worship, scripture reading, fellowship. May we love you with all our hearts, minds, and souls. Walk with us on this Lenten journey, Lord. Give us eyes to see the path you would have us take. Give us ears to hear the truth you would speak to us. Give us the wisdom to store our treasure with you so that our hearts may abide in your perfect peace. And together we pray the prayer that Jesus taught us, saying, Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. 
Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. In the 6th century, the church began a ritual at the beginning of the Lenten season of imposing ashes made by burning the previous year's palm branches as a reminder that God created us from dust, and to dust we shall return. Yet, in between the clay of creation and the dust of death is life, life worth living fully and joyfully. In, the se in this season, we will listen to the still, small voice of God and find our own voice in that conversation of life. But first, we must make the turn towards the divine. This year, we are not able to receive ashes as we normally do. The pandemic prevents that. But by the memorial hall door, you will find mask with an ashen cross that was made from the ashes of the burned branches from Palm Sunday of 2020. The mask will remain by the door until Sunday. If you haven't already, please pick up one of the masks as a reminder to repent, to turn towards God for this 40 days in a much deeper way than you might normally do. Wherever you are watching right now, we invite you to listen to the closing song and reflect on these ashes and remain in prayer for a few moments as we begin the discipline of listening during this Lent. 